Hi guys. It is a cloudy but pleasant day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. I'm not sure if the top of my head is being chopped off or not. Oh, well, I'm sure a lot of you would love the top of my head to be chopped off. But it is... Where are we? We are at Thursday, November 11th. 11-11. 2021 and the little dog and I we are in Durham North Carolina and the little dog and I need to pack it up and head to Augusta Georgia for the next couple of days but before we do since it is Thursday do what I try to do each Thursday and we're gonna go over to oilprice.com we're gonna go over there and pick out a few stories from oilprice.com to see how the energy investors are chronicling the collapse of a planet in uh, four or five stories <clears throat> for heading off. Now, I, I kind of touched on this a few days ago. This is oilprice.com's uh, spin on Joe Biden's infrastructure bill, as I was mentioning. Uh, this is good news for oil investors, fossil fuel investors absolutely cheering on Joe Biden's new infrastructure bill for the simple reason that Biden's infrastructure bill will boost oil demand. <clears throat> While the Biden administration's landmark infrastructure bill has been framed as an anti-fossil fuels, as anti-fossil fuels by the media, as well as by politicians such as coal country's Joe Manchin, oil has ironically surged on the back of the bill's long-awaited passing. This is anal oil analyst, analyst Louise Dixon, quote, the U.S. infrastructure bill screams bullish for oil. Yes, the passage of the $1 trillion U.S. infrastructure spending package will likely spur a countrywide economic recovery. Yeah, we shall see. In turn, increasing demand for oil. But what's more, Biden's infrastructure package has always had a huge boost for oil demand embedded in provisions such as funding for road building, which requires a whole lot of petroleum-based asphalt. Even before the bill was torn apart and simplified to mollify Republicans, the infrastructure bill was far more oil and gas friendly than most headlines would have you believe. Yes, in fact, many environmental groups have long been vocal skeptics of the Biden administration's infrastructure bill for kowtowing to fossil fuel industry and allowing the most progressive provisions for mitigating global warming to be gutted in order to make the bill appealing to a bipartisan Congress. Um, yep, uh, provisions such as funding for carbon offsetting widely viewed as a classic greenwashing tactic which is exactly what they are, have been described by skeptics as, quote, on the oil industry's wish list and have been viewed as, quote, a gift to oil companies by climate groups. Uh, <clears throat> Biden is walking a very fine line between pushing forward a climate-friendly agenda and keeping the oil and gas sector from crumbling, 
and taking the U.S. economy with it. One New York Times article proclaimed last week, even as Biden pushes clean energy, he seeks more oil production. Yes. Uh, indeed, as oil and gasoline prices have risen around the world, <clears throat> as global supply chains have struggled to keep up with energy demand, growing anxiety about inflation has reflected poorly on the Biden administration. Do you think so? And so you won't be surprised. I'm just going to, this headline just says it all. As some of the knock on headlines about this. Wow, U.S. shale is finally ready to open the taps. Anybody who thought that shale was dead, good time to be. Good time to be investing in shale. Okay. All right. Wow. Imagine this. The Biden administration will not shut down Line 5 oil pipeline. Do you think so? The U.S. administration will not shut down the Line five oil pipeline from Canada to the United States, which Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer once closed. Line five operator Enbridge Corporation and the state of Michigan are in litigation over Michigan's withdrawal of the easement for the pipeline's <coughs> operation while Canada has officially invoked bilateral negotiations with the U.S. over the fate of the pipeline that brings oil and propane to the Midwest. Yep, yep. Uh, there you go. Quoting... Uh, I'm not sure who this is exactly, who they're, who this person uh, is, uh, some press secretary. Anyway, quote, <clears throat> We expect that both the U.S. and Canada will engage constructively in these negotiations. Canada is a close ally, a key partner in energy trade, as well as efforts to address the climate crisis and protect the environment. Yes. Uh, these negotiations and discussions between the two countries should not be viewed as anything more than that, and certainly not an indication that the U.S. government is considering shutdown. That is something that we are not going to do close quote last year the Michigan governor and the state's Department of Natural Resources revoked Enbridge's easement for the operation of the twin line 5 pipeline citing repeated violations yes and the need to protect the great lakes. Uh, there you go. Joe Biden teaming up with that pretty boy in Canada to uh, save the planet. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, so now we have the other side of the metal coin so, you, you, you know, even if the, this pipe dream, this pipeline dream about getting off fossil fuels was not a pipe dream. So let's say that all fossil fuel production stops tomorrow. What does this mean 
not so much for oil investors. They will just put their money into investing in metals. This is how mining uh, for the clean, green, renewable energy transition, you know, the renewable energy transition, the excellent article uh, breakdown here, which I don't have time to really get into uh, with the, you know, exposing the big green lie of the energy transition, even if it were to happen. Metals will be the oil of the future. Yes, the energy transition is in full swing with electric vehicles supplanting gas guzzlers and solar panels and wind turbines replace, replacing coal and oil as the world's leading energy sources. Yes. Uh, the energy transition is driving the next commodity super cycle with immense prospects for technology manufacturers, energy traders, and investors. Yes. Uh, new energy research uh, provider Bloomberg NEF estimates that the global transition will require 173 trillion dollars in energy supply and infrastructure investment over the next three decades with renewable energy expected to provide 85 percent of our energy needs by 2050 anyone who believes that uh, but nowhere, nowhere is the outlook brighter than the metals industry. <clears throat> clean energy, clean energy technologies require more metals than fossil fuel based counterparts. Yes, according to one of these analyses, prices for copper, nickel, cobalt and lithium could reach historical peaks for an unprecedented sustained period in a net zero emissions scenario. Yes, with the total value of production rising more than fourfold between now and 2040 and even rivaling the total value of crude oil production. And what this boils down to is uh, there's a um, one forecast says that electric and fuel cell vehicles will displace 21 million barrels of oil per day uh, of oil demand by 2050 while well, it's a hundred million. So if it's a hundred million, you still got 80 million barrels. But anyway, what they do is they really break this down, and I can make a whole rant uh, about this. <clears throat> they break it down into the estimated cumulative real revenue for the global production of selected energy transition needs. So anyway, what they do is they look at all of these things, and I can just barely, they break all of this down. I can just touch the main, uh, they start out with solar panels, key metals and materials, steel, aluminum, polysilicon, copper, and silver, about uh, how all of those metals going into these clean, green, sustainable solar panels, the giant holes being left around the planet, of course, wind turbines, the key metals and materials needed for wind turbines. Number one, concrete. The humongous amounts of concrete, you know, being one of the biggest uh, carbon emissions producing things. Concrete. Do not forget steel. Uh, glass fiber reinforced plastic, can you say an oil petroleum product, 
copper aluminum carbon fiber reinforced polymers all sorts of ways to make money don't forget the lithium batteries obviously uh, can you say lithium but also besides the lithium don't forget the copper the aluminum the nickel the cobalt and the manganese going into those batteries then they break down electric vehicle chargers uh, which are mainly composed of copper uh, anyway uh, breaking down the big green lie Sancho <clears throat> and I gotta go get my dog so just real quickly I'm just gonna run down some headlines some various headlines I don't have time to get into uh, here is the US and China do not join the pledge for fossil fuel vehicle phase out I bet the US and China not signing up for that one yes uh, we already talked about Biden will not shut down the line 5 oil plan imagine this the COP26 climate summit is not hearing Africa's concern. Yes, I bet. Here is France bets on nuclear power to reach its net zero goal. How you can expect nuclear power uh, in France to go through the roof here. Well, oil prices soar. Uh, I'm sure here is Bank of America sees $120 oil next year. Here is how South Africa's energy minister vows to fight for coal. Yes, here is the United Kingdom will not join the alliance vowing the end date of oil and gas production do you think so uh, let's see but we do have some good news we are going to wind up with one good news headline auto sales lag as supply chain issues continue. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, auto sales lag. Anyway, guys, Sancho! <clears throat> We've got to wrap this up, pack up my little trailer, and get in my gas sucking truck load up on some of this three dollar and fifty cent gallon gas and uh, head to Augusta Georgia where tomorrow we get to go visit the Georgia Guidestones but that might be a rant for somewhere else on the internet but anyway get out there and uh, visit the Georgia Guidestones in your uh, gas sucking truck while you still can Bye, guys. Little dog. Come on now. Get up here. Sancho. Sancho. Now. I don't know what he's got down there. Little dog. Come on. We got to go. We're packing up. Uh, the little dog.